Ladies and gentlemen, as an, as an individual who doesn't necessarily watch porn, this motion was kind of problematic for me. But I realized that there was a specific <coughs> reason why I didn't watch pornography that is being so advocated in the current system. And that's why we are very proud to propose a motion that government should fund pornography designed specifically for female viewers online. Let me further clarify our model before going on to other things. First of all, the government would fund a national poll that would ask female viewers or ask females in general what kind of pornography would be the most ideal situation, would be the most ideal for them. And then using this national poll, we would fund industries to actually make this pornography viewable for female viewers. So we're going to use the results from the national poll to, and, put the con and now actualize the content within the pornography and fund pornography industries for that. So now we're saying that the government has a responsibility to change the one-sided setting of, of pornography. And we're saying that this, not, this does not necessarily mean that the government is funding pornography in order to advocate pornography, but the government has a responsibility to change the setting. The government has a responsibility to change the theater. Because we think that the government, because we think that pornography right now in the current system is actually a very one-sided mm -hmm. setting, only at, only suited for male viewers, and we think that the government has a responsibility to change that setting. We think that not necessarily pornography doesn't necessarily is. Pornography is not an industry. I'll take you in a moment. Is not an industry that can that, that can necessarily be stopped, and therefore we think that this motion is very pertinent. Yes. So if women so want a specific porn industry, why doesn't it arouse, uh, arise naturally as a commercial industry? If women, no, we see in the current system that the that pornography is one sided for male viewers, and we think that. One, pornography is one side for male viewers, and we think that by changing the side, it's actually going to be beneficial. So let's first go on to the points. First of all, we say, first of all, we are going to give you, number one, the harms in the current system, and number two, the resulting benefits. Not now, no thank you. So first of all, let's talk about the harms in the current system. We think that pornography is specifically designed for male viewers. It portrays male dominance, and it's a very one-sided setting. Even fa in fact, it, it has been shown throughout that the spectators, most of them are male, ladies and gentlemen, and we think that pornography mm -hmm. sometimes even fuels sexual crimes. Although it might not necessarily be the sole factor in committing a crime, we see that many people who have committed uh -huh. crimes say that pornography, these kinds of vulnerable images of women are actually being advocated in society, and we think that this is a bad thing. No, thank you. So we're saying that how it portrays male dominance Male dominance is about this, and we actually want to empower females in society, ladies and gentlemen. And because we recognize that we can't destroy completely the pornography industry, we want to change the theater. We want to change the system. And although it might not be the most effective system for advocating for female empowerment and reducing sexual crimes, if that even existed, we think that by out allowing interception of female of female empowerment into the system is actually a good thing, ladies and gentlemen. And we think that by that reason, we think that re this resolution should be passed. So we see that male pornography promotes inequality. It promotes a disparity in gender, and, and it, pro it promotes females as a repressed, vulnerable image and an object that we don't think is a good thing in the current system. So now let's go on to the resulting benefits if we pass our policy. Number one, we think that this actually promotes a feeling of safety and empowerment. We think that women are going to be viewed as less vulnerable objects that are actually have a more uh, have a more empowered uh, situation, uh, situation or empowered image within that pornography. And we think that status, the status quo actually sometimes promotes violence against women because now them, because in the current system, women in pornography are viewed as objects that can be advocate, that can be manip manipulated by the power of men. And we think that by ha by allowing pornography that has uh, more images of more of women being more in control of the situation, we think this would actually be, be a good thing. Number one, because we recognize that pr the pornography industry can't be repressed, but number two, we want to change the setting and we want to change the theater for women. Two, we're going to say that this makes the situation better for female porn stars. No, thank you. So we see that in the current system also, female porn stars are viewed negatively. We're in a situation where they are vulnerable and object to the manipulation of men. And we want, we want to change this perception for female porn stars. Because they're in the pornography industry, because of family reasons, because of lack of money, for many reasons. We, and we see that by wanting to protect these men, wanting to protect these women, we have to make the situation better for them. We want to portray them in a, in a society that doesn't necessarily criticize them for being the object of men, for being 
for being, being in a weaker position than men. We want to change the situation for people so that they would actually view them in a more positive light. It's like how we view uh, people such as prostitutes. We want to make the situation better for prostitutes and the government actually funds some industries, fund, has, some, has some funds for prostitutes because they recognize that right. not only can they not be, not only can they not be uh, completely dis obliterated out of society, but we recognize that they do have some rights. We think that the female porn stars in these situations do have rights as well, and the fact that they are always being portrayed in a situation that's more vulnerable, that's more, uh, that's more less empowering than women, I'll take you in a moment, that's more less empowering than men, we think it's a really bad thing, and we need to change the situation. Yes? If mainstream pornography is so detrimental, and there is such a huge demand for female friendly pornography, why doesn't the free market already cater for that? Because we see that most of the most of the pornography is viewed by male viewers, and we see that because most of the pornography is viewed by male viewers, like the <coughs> pornography industry is more motivated to put to put them to, to put male to put males in a situation where they are more empowered and put females in a situation where they are more vulnerable. They're playing onto the fact already onto the existing system that females are viewed yeah, in a more yeah. negative light, and we see that because most of these viewers are considered to be males, we think that that needs to be changed. Even though males are, are males are the majority of the, of this pornography, we think that that <coughs> would be changed. That that would be changed, and even though the males would still be the most, uh, so still be in the dominant side of the people who actually view this pornography by allowing the system, we think that an interception of an image where people were female are viewed as more powerful beings. We think that's a really good thing, and we think that it will have some marginal, even though it's a marginal effect on the male viewers, and we think that's a good thing. So we've shown you that the people who watch this porn are going to be affected as well, and my partner Joseph will elaborate on that later. So we think that because the harms in the current system are so harmful to the image of women in general, that more that male pornography poor promotes inequality and a disparity in gender. And because we believe that a feeling of safety and a feeling of security is so necessary in society, and we want to make the situation better for these female porn stars, we are very proud to propose, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so in the 15 minutes of prep, me and Azim decided we do not like porn in general, ladies and gentlemen. We believe that all sorts of porn is uh, detrimental to the image of a female and to the female itself. However, this isn't part of the motion. We're going to show you how, first of all, any uh, goals that they're trying to achieve are not going to exist, that there actually is going to be no change, something that they have conceded to within their speech. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to present our own uh, positive material, which is going to be, first of all, how it's wrong for the government to do this, and second of all, how it commodifies women. So back to what uh, our, our opening government has said. So essentially, they started out with the model that they're going to ask, they're going to some sort of, uh, they're going, uh, going to go through some sort of national pool where they ask each and every woman in the in the country uh, what kind of porn they like, and then they're going to decide upon that what happens next. So, ladies and gentlemen, if the majority of women would like male-dominated porn, if the majority of women would like some sort of uh, bondage or gay porn, ladies and gentlemen, then it's going to be very counterproductive in their case. No, thank you. Then, if, then they are going to, under your own model, uh, be destroying your own arguments, ladies and gentlemen, because you're going to ha be having uh, to fund all sorts of porn uh, that the majority of women like. But, ladies and gentlemen, um, going on to the more major issues, ladies and gentlemen, on the first, uh, on the first argument they said that it is one-sided for, uh, for male viewers and that uh, only males watch it and that uh, women don't really have a niche to go to when they want to watch porn. So, essentially, ladies and gentlemen, what we see on side opposition is that porn is a private commercial interest. Porn is a private commercial industry. So we see that if there are women that want some sort of porn, whether it be feminine porn, whether it's soft porn, whether it's lesbian porn, then there's already a platform for that. We see that porn is already, that kind of porn is already offered. However, ladies and gentlemen, it's not popular because it is not demanded by the society, by the women that use yourselves, so no thank you, said that they want to watch, ladies and gentlemen. But ladies and gentlemen, even if you fund those branches of porn that already exist, we see that the situation isn't going to change. Because when we asked her in the POI, how is that going to change? How are more women going to be interested in porn and how specific porn branches are going to come up just because you're funding them? They said, 
Well, it's dominated because more there are more male viewers and women aren't interesting. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you fund lesbian porn, if you fund feminine porn, or if you fund soft porn, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to increase the viewership. We see that if women want that so much, it would naturally, the viewership would naturally go up. These are porn industries that are already offered. However, ladies and gentlemen, we see that they're commercially unprofitable because these women don't want that type of porn. So if you fund it, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to make that porn more available. You're, there's going to be more of it. However, the, there are, that's not necessarily mean, that will not necessarily mean that more women are going to be wanting to watch that. And you're definitely not changing the fact, no thank you, that there are, that the main audience of porn is men and that the main uh, thing that men want ladies and gentlemen is uh, something else uh, something else that's not included in your model ladies and gentlemen so we essentially see that it's not changing the system you're not going to offer women more choices because they already exist we see that you're going to make it more available however we don't necessarily see how it's going to incentivize more women to watch because it's already out there, ladies and gentlemen. And then on the second argument, ladies and gentlemen, how it's, there's associated harms for men and women in the porn industry. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, they're only funding a specific branch of pornography. They're not eliminating the other. They're not decreasing the viewership of the other. That means, ladies and gentlemen, that the porn actress that wants to make money is still going to stay in the male-dominated uh, porn industry because, ladies and gentlemen, we don't believe with the assumption that just because some sort of softer porn is going to exist where women like it more, that all of the porn actresses are going to leave from the mainstream porn industry to your porn industry that is not watching there's a status quo. So we don't necessarily see how the associated harms are going to go away. You're still going to have the exact amount of the porn industry that exists under the status quo and you're not changing a single thing. You're making female porn more available, however we have not seen the link of how it's going to change the system or how it's going to increase the viewership. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on our positive material about how, first of all, the government shouldn't be doing this in the first place. So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, we see that the government shouldn't be uh, funding porn in the first place in general. We see, first of all, it's a private industry, and we'd only fund private industries where there are certain uh, benefits attached to it that we can visibly see in the short term. So we don't necessarily want the taxpayers' money, which would include uh, people who are Christian who don't necessarily want that porn to be, uh, to be funded by the government or anything like that, going into a specific porn industry. But ladies and gentlemen, why specifically feminist porn is going to be bad here? is that we see that it, short, it draws a distinction by the government between males and females, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we see it's acceptable under, for example, affirmative action, ladies and gentlemen, because there are associated benefits that are visible in the short term, that are tangible in the short term, because women get an education or women get a job, ladies and gentlemen, and there's an actual manifestation, or it's to correct some sort of historical injustice. However, we don't see the link of porn correcting historical injustice. We don't see the link of porn making the situation better for women, because because we don't see how the situation is going to change in general, and I'll take you in a moment. So, something that you have not provided for us. Yes? Okay, so how about female porn stars who are actually viewed in society in a very negative light because of the industry that they're in? So why can't you make the situation? Okay, thank you. You yourself conceded that female-friendly uh, porn is already not desired by the viewers. You're not going to change the fact that the male audience dominates the porn industry. That means that the porn industry that is interested in something that is going on right now, which is male-oriented porn, is going to stay there. And for you as an actress to make a significant amount of money or to stay popular and stay into a job, it's still going to be more profitable for you to stay in that industry, ladies and gentlemen. You are not changing, effectively, the status quo. Second argument, ladies and gentlemen, is how it commodifies women. So this is why we said that we're against porn in general. However, we don't want any funding to go into porn. Ladies and gentlemen, we see that porn target is right now targeted to men. So we don't necessarily see how that's going to change. However, if we see that in the porn that is targeted to men, women are used as tools, and they're effectively used as tools to pressure, to pleasure the audience, to pleasure themselves, and stimulate them sexually, ladies and gentlemen. So we effectively see that they're being commodified and objectified. What is changed, ladies, by that status quo? We see that not not necessarily more viewership is going to arise in your status quo, but even if that's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen, only the target audience changes. It doesn't necessarily mean that the audience in general that watches the porn is going to change, and it doesn't mean that the objective changes. So we effectively see that the government, in this case, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the uh, is going to be the agent that commodifies women even further because we still see them as a tool uh, to pleasure oneself. So, ladies and gentlemen, we beg you to oppose.
<clears throat> okay, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot, we as a first government cannot accept with the, f or with the current status quo that in the most kind of the porn, or in the every kind of, almost every kind of the porn, there is some man who grab a woman, who do, uh, who do everything that he wants to do with this woman, and after this, uh, this is going to, to uh, send a negative signal to our society and that's why v women are considered as a sexual objects and that's why there is inequality in our society in our current system firstly first of all i will, I will try to rebattle uh the closing of uh, the first opposition and after i will i will emphasize my own arguments so to start firstly they were talking us that our own system is counterproductive because if if the woman liked the male porn then uh, we would we would never we were we will we will, we will not contribute to the current system. We will not do what we want to do. So, like how they can like the current female porn if they are not watching the current uh, the current male porn? Like it will not happen because like now they are not watching a porn. So they will not if the, if, the, if we will ask them whether what kind of porn they will like, it will not be the current porn because they are not watching it. Second point will be that. Uh, no, thank you. If woman wants the porn. Sir. If, no, thank you. If women want, uh, if generally w women like the porn, uh, why it will not produce some uh, w women porn naturally? So, ladies and gentlemen, this this is very simple, and we have the two reasons for this. Firstly, because it's more profitable for the porn makers to make the porn only for males, because like I don't know, 90% of the males are watching the porn, and only like for example, 10% of the ma of the females are doing so. So for every yes, porn, no, thank you. For every porn maker, it's more profitable to do this kind of porn for males. And the second po uh, second uh, <coughs> point is that women are so disgusted. So disgusted for, from the, because of the because of the current porn, they do not believe a normal porn makers. That's why they are not willing to actually watch the current porn. But if we will tell them that ladies and gentlemen, that ladies, this porn is for us, for you. This porn is more uh, sensitive. This porn will not show you as just as the sexual objects. They will watch it because they will believe us. Okay. So if naturally women don't watch porn in general. Is it going to reach a significant effect and empower women in some sort? Yes, of yes, yes, because view. naturally, naturally, women do not like the current porn because they, it's showing us as a sexual objects and they are so disgusted with the current situation that they are not watching it. No, thank you. Another, uh, another point. Uh, they were, t they were trying to tell us that we will, that will not change anything in the status quo because there, there will be still m most of the male porn. Uh, that uh, and the most of the male audience of the porn. What we will what we will try to show you is now is the is the fact that you will change the status quo even in the in the no thank you even in the marginal way it's good for us and why because if we will fund the the female porn this porn will be more attractive it will be more attractive to make this female porn it means that it will be more attractive for porn makers to make that kind of a porn so there will be kind of more equality between the female porn and the male porn and if we will just show you because it, it, it doesn't already exist this kind of a porn sensitive porn where, when there is not just uh, women it? who women woman no thank you women who, uh, women who is dominated and the male who is actually dominating the women and we will just if we will if we will show all, also to a man that this kind of porn exists and uh, and if we will like make more of the f of the female porn we will actually just um, in a marginal way uh, change the way how okay. how f women are con are are uh, considered in our society yeah uh, so essentially if your main problem is that male the male audience watches porn that is demeaning to women how does that change the main problem that you're addressing on the It will change the, this current problem because we will show to a man that the, another kind of a porn exists. And also, we will make more women, we will make more women watch this porn. So we will just make more porn in our society that will, is, that is a better porn for us. Because we will try to reduce the, like, it will be, more, it, it will be less attractive <laughs> To, uh, for the porn makers to make actually a male porn and, and more attractive to make f uh, ma uh, porn for the females. Okay, another argument. You are just trying to show us that it will not be profitable for any uh, woman porn star. It, for, uh, it will not be profitable for the women. So, uh, no, we are trying that this will be profitable for the women porn star. Firstly, because we want to, because we, uh, uh, women porn stars are considered that badly in our society actually because they are just some kind of object that every uh, uh, that every man can do with can do everything that he wants to do so if we will uh, engage more women 
in the in the porn that is not taking as just as the, as the as the female object, just as a sexual object, because we will make more female porn. That that then uh, generally uh, a female po a female uh, female porn star as a role will change in our society, or even the the way how we consider a female porn stars porn stars. It, it will be not just the just. Uh, Women who do every uh, women who do everything. No, thank you. For the men, it will be not just the w women who is getting tortured by the men in a porn, but it, uh, but we will just try <laughs> them. That it, it's kind of it's it's a porn that has some story that it's, it's like I know it's more sensitive. That's and, and and if we if we get this kind of a if we will make uh, this kind of a porn, it will change how, uh, the way how we consider a, a female porn stars porn stars. So uh, and now to our case to our. Uh, part of the case. So we, we are trying to show you, ladies and gentlemen, that the current system is, is, is just, no thank you, emphasizing the inequality between the men and the women. Because in the, in the cur current porn, there, there's like still uh, some men who grab the woman, who do everything, who, who, who uh, w what does he like to do with her. So uh, it also uh, just making the woman uh, be considered just as a, some sexual object. And this has negative consequences in our society because females cannot get uh, uh, as much money, cannot uh, earn as, uh, as much money as, for example, men, because they cannot get a job, because they are just, uh, they cannot get to manager positions, because they are considered just as something unequal, something that, that should be dominated by the man, something that, 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 that just as a sexual object and not uh, the, as an equal <coughs> partner in our society to all men. And what, what we are trying to show you that this, uh, that this resolution will have some positive effects because we will change uh, the way how we consider a, a female porn stars, and also we will what we will try what we will do is that we will uh, increase the uh, the amount of of good porn for us, the sensitive porn that doesn't show uh, women just as a sexual object. So we will we will try to change uh, the view uh, of the women in our society. Thank you. We have seen all speakers from the opening half of the government, but yet we are still to know <laughs> what pornography designed specifically for female viewers is. So here is what they said. They said that, there, well, we will have a national pool that will be, that will be created out of, by conducting a poll from all female viewers. So if in this national poll, ladies and gentlemen, women want to watch porn in which there is male dominance, how exactly are you going to change anything is a question that we asked in proposition which they have not yet answered. But we told you, ladies and gentlemen, that yes, maybe, maybe pornography designed specifically for female viewers does exist. And this pornography might be in the form of SNM or soft pornography, which might also be designed specifically for female viewers. But this sort of pornography, ladies and gentlemen, does exist within the status quo. Yes, it does. But does that mean, ladies and gentlemen, that it has increased female viewership side by side? No, it has not. And what could be the possible reason for that? The women are not interested in porn, maybe. So ladies and gentlemen, how exactly are you going bo boosting the pornogra pornog pornography industry with a lot of funds going to increase female viewership if females are not interested in pornography, ladies and gentlemen, even when you have this porn that is specifically designed for female viewers within the status quo existing in the form of soft porn. And if soft porn, ladies and gentlemen, is something that is designed specifically for female viewers, why then are there more male viewers of soft porn, ladies and gentlemen, than more female viewers? And this is where the policy becomes highly problematic and our point about viewership becomes all the more, uh, becomes all the more strong. Because we said that even if pornography 
is set to cater to a certain audience it does not necessarily mean that that audience will be watching that porn because if for example ladies and gentlemen you increase funding for soft porn that does not mean that there will be less male viewers and more female viewers because even in the case of lesbian porn ladies and gentlemen which is designed specifically for lesbians you see how there are more male viewers ladies and gentlemen than female viewers and even in this case ladies and gentlemen where pornography is specifically designed for an audience it does not necessarily mean that that audience is in treat to watch pornography and this is where lady german their policy became problematic and we don't see lady german how through pornography they are going to emancipate women maybe they're going to come up with pornography lady german in which women discuss their women rights or in all during sex but that does not mean lady german they that will change anything because a man might as well mute or whatever the women is saying and just focus on the sex so we don't see lady and gentlemen how when well pornography is specifically designed to just be viewed for pleasure people are going to take a meaning out of pornography lady and gentlemen hey this porn em emancipates women it is very good porn and not say that this is something that is used for pleasure we think lady and gentlemen that the essential purpose of pornography is to please individuals and there is no positive image lady and gentlemen that you can ever portray through pornography even if you fund it even if it is specifically designed for this audience so we don't see how they cater to they need sit down now ladies and gentlemen they also made this very funny point about how it promotes safety we don't see ladies and gentlemen how if you start funding porn it will increase the safety for these women what exactly do they mean ladies and gentlemen are they going to be provided a safe environment if they want more females ladies and gentlemen within the porn industry we already see ladies and gentlemen how there are enough females within the pornography industry even when in the case of every single even in the case of the status quo ladies and gentlemen we don't see how there is a decrease num decrease number of female female porn porn, porn actresses ladies and gentlemen and we don't see how they, their model will increase employment because already ladies and gentlemen we see how there are enough female fe how there are enough female porn stars within the status quo so we don't see ladies and gentlemen on a fundamental level if they want to increase viewership if they want to increase female porn stars we don't see how their policy achieve that sit down and here is where our case became all the more important we said okay even if we can see ladies and gentlemen that this sort of pornography does promote an idea well then why does not why doesn't the status quo ladies and gentlemen serve as a self correcting mechanism in which if women ladies and gentlemen feel that this is something that is catering to them then why doesn't pornography why doesn't the viewership of pornography automatically increase it does not increase for a certain reason and that reason is because it is not effective so even when it is funded ladies and gentlemen we don't see how it is exactly going to change and we said that we are principally against pornography we ladies and gentlemen see that we are principally against pornography but even when ladies and gentlemen we think that pornography is something that is relevant to the private sector and we've never seen ladies and gentlemen how they challenged our distinction between other forms of affirmative action that the government takes and this form of affirmative action because the affirmative action that we talked about ladies and gentlemen leads to a tangible end point so if for example you increase more female representation within the parliament ladies and gentlemen that is going to reach a tangible end point how is this reaching any tangible end point ladies in general is a question that we ask them sit down and then our point about commodification was never tackled by the team proposition because we said ladies and gentlemen since pornography is specifically designed to be viewed for pleasure what it means is ladies and gentlemen that if we agree that it will increase viewership it will increase viewership for the male audience as well so what does that mean ladies and gentlemen that now the government is government ladies and gentlemen is acting as an agent for commodification because pornography ladies and gentlemen promotes this idea that women are only and only sexual objects and we as a government need to fight against this image as opposed to promote it and having understood that let's look at the positive line that i will be expounding upon which are the associated harms of promoting the porn pornography industry <coughs> porn, porn industry so ladies and gentlemen what do you see within the status quo that a helpless woman lady in jammu who is not able to find a job decides to move on to the porn industry and why is that that is because ladies and gentlemen because there is no other viable alternative for that women and when you start encouraging ladies and gentlemen porn pornography industry what exactly are you doing you're saying ladies and gentlemen that this is an outlet for you to go this is an outlet ladies and gentlemen that we are going to create which has a lot of associated harms because the pornography industry ladies and gentlemen according to lots of studies has been associated with the drug industry as well and we see ladies and gentlemen how if you start promoting the pornography industry ladies and gentlemen the associated harms of women ladies and gentlemen be commodified in the first place and secondly ladies and gentlemen the association with the drug industry are so great that you are incurring a lot of harm to these women and this is all the more important ladies and gentlemen because this policy is catering to protecting women and when the pornography industry ladies and gentlemen something in which women are 
are mostly forced and are supposed to go to as a last resort. You as a government, ladies and gentlemen, need to take a principled stand against it as opposed to promote it. And if you start doing that, ladies and gentlemen, we don't see how you are how you are not being hypocritical in your stance and how you are not how and how you are emancipating women. So what does team opposition of today show to you? We've shown to you, ladies and gentlemen, that number one. We don't see how that increases male, male audio, how that increases female viewership because already you've conceded to the fact that females are not interested in porn. Moreover, ladies and gentlemen, but the fundamental problem that they highlighted was that male-dominated porn demeans women. But in their model, they're not banning male-dominated porn, ladies and gentlemen, so they're not catering to the problem at all. Thirdly, we showed you, ladies and gentlemen, how it commodifies women. And fourthly, the associated harms of the porn pornography industry are so great that you need to take a stand against this. For all those reasons, we urge you to vote for the opposition. Thank you. Start. The primary contention that we received from opening opposition is that this won't be effective, this won't help emancipate women, and so this affirmative action, they do concede that this is a form of affirmative action, won't be beneficial, so you can't take it. And they went on to imply in their speech that just because porn is designed for a specific quota of, or specific sect of viewers, that doesn't mean that those particular viewers watch it. That is, is ex exactly our point. If we make porn, that if we make pornography that is female friendly, that shows women in a dominant position as opposed to the porn that is naturally here, and men go and watch it, then that is a good thing. Because that implies or that brings the idea that we as a government are trying to bring that women are not some creatures that you can subdue or objectify or dominate and that is how it is emancipating women that is how it is bringing a positive benefit and this is something that they have never tackled with in fact they've conceded to the fact that just because you have porn for a particular sect that doesn't mean that those people will go and watch it and that is our point just because you have female no thank you sirs just because you have female friendly pornography doesn't mean that only women will watch it it means that men will watch it too and that is a good thing now here comes in their second line of argument. They said that it will commodify women and the reason that it will commodify women is because more male viewers will watch it because you only have male viewers and if they watch pornography then they will start commodifying, this, uh, commodifying women in this case too. We agree that more, male, more well, male viewers will watch it. What we say is that because in this sort of pornography you are not dominating women, they won't start commodifying women. Because the problem that you're outlining exists in the status quo. The reason why you commodify women in the status quo is because in pornography you sub it is portrayed that women are, uh, women are supposed to be dominated. And that is the idea, no thank you sir, that we have a problem with. And let's talk about this idea. Why does this have such a significant impact? Why pornography to begin with? Because you see, who are the people? No, thank you. So what is the target audience for pornography? As children, you grow up watching porn and you grow up with this idea that as a man, you are supposed to dominate a, a, a female in your sexual relationships. And that idea is implanted into your head from an early age. So when you grow up and you act upon that idea, you, you do exactly what is shown in those pornographic, uh, por uh, pornograph pornographic videos. No, thank you, sir. Stop badgering. In, in those pornographic videos, you go and you say that you are the dominant partner and you you will go and dominate women and that is a bad thing because that is harming no thank you sirs that is harming the emancipation of women that is the same idea that we as a government or we as a society have tried to stop that women are inferior and women deserve to be dominated which is why in this case we will 
we, uh, we will have pornography that from an early age implants this idea within children's mind, within your society's mind, that women are not necessarily supposed to be dominated, that they too are equal, that they are not inferior beings. No, thank you, sir. Another contention that they had is that the market will automatically regulate this pornography. Now, we don't believe that the market targets to minority because the market, market only targets to the majority of the people. Sir. And the majority of the people in the status quo watch, want to watch porn in which women are subdued is because they've grown up watching that particular form of porn. That idea is what they've grown up with and that idea is what we have a problem with. So if no, thank you, sir. So if, uh, if the majority of the women don't want it and only a minority of uh, uh, viewers want it, then the government does what it does in every case. It goes and it helps the industry and it knows that it might not be profitable, but because it is a good thing, because it is beneficial, you go and you help out the industry by funding them. And that is what we are doing in this case. No, thank you, sir. Their last contention, was that, it, was that with the policy brought by the opening government. And they said that what if women only want to watch male-dominated uh, male porn? If you have a poll in which you ask women what types of porn would you like to see more, and in the status quo you already have a large amount of male-dominated porn, then we believe it is rational to assume that they will go for types of pornography that do not exist in the status quo, which are female-friendly <coughs> forms of pornography. I'll take any one of you right now. Maybe you have one video of transgender porn, ladies and gentlemen, as opposed to the large caches of videos for male dominated porn. We are not saying that this type of pornography doesn't exist. We are saying that this exists in a small amount and we need to increase that. Now moving on to our own extension, we as the closing government will be talking to you, no thank you sir, will be analyzing the effect on the porn industry as a whole uh, of this particular policy. Now let's talk about the porn industry. The porn is, porn is a huge industry that has, that contributes a la large amount of money to your economy or that is very beneficial. But even in the status quo, it is not as large as it can be. And the problem and the reason behind that uh, is the same uh, that, they've, uh, that they've reiterated time and time again, is that there's a certain type of, no thank you sir, there's a certain type of connotation attached to the pornographic industry. There's a certain taboo attached that it is bad to go and work in this industry. We outline or we, we, we separate this industry from the rest of our industry. And the reason why this, uh, the reason why because of this connotation, because of this taboo, the only types of women who go to work in this industry are women who only who, who go who have no other option. Women who use this as a last resort. And we think that that is not necessarily bad because this industry isn't that bad. You still regulate that industry. Azim's entire speech oh, about that, uh, no, thank you, sir, about the drug industry being tied to the pornographic industry. That is a uh, that is a harm that you can regulate and you do regulate. That harm exists, yes, but you still regulate it. No policy is perfect, ladies and gentlemen. And in this case, if a certain amount of uh, harm is tied to this industry, we don't think there is reason enough to ban this industry. Now, what happens when the government starts funding this industry? You tell your people that it is not that bad, that that taboo that you've attached isn't that bad. It legitimizes this industry to begin with, and that is a good thing, because that removes the connotation that this is a bad industry and you should only go and work in it as a last resort, because that, that a uh, hurdle that you create that people who have no other option are the only people who work in this industry is removed when the government tells your people that this is a legitimate industry. So more and more people will start and going working in this industry because this b hurdle that this is a bad industry is removed. And we think that that will allow porn to grow as a whole. That will allow the entire industry to grow to its full potential. That is not something that they can do in the status quo because of this connotation that is attached, which is removed when the government, which is which makes this decisions for you tells your people that it is not that bad, that it is actually a good industry and that it is a legitimate industry. For all these reasons, ladies and gentlemen, because we are emancipating women, because we are supporting the right ideas, you need to vote for government.
I'm definitely stretching this analogy too far, but you know, there is one similarity between this debate and pornography industry. You know, the male uh, audience is dominating here, but the women here may still enjoy it and may still do it. And that's the contention we're trying to defend as the closing opposition. That the porn industry is good as it is. It allows for freedom for women. And if we regulate it, we only harm the feminist movement, the women themselves, and the greater society. And that's what we'll try to present. The regulation of porn industry has nothing but bad effects. So to rebut the case of the opening and closing government, I'll talk about how the current system actually caters to the need that they themselves espouse. Then I'll talk about how um, it would not benefit the society, which is, uh, it would not benefit the industry, it would not change it to a greater extent, and it would not have any effect on male viewer, uh, view on women. And then I'll talk about how deep, and that will be our extension, how the policy they're suggesting would only have uh, marginalizing, marginalizing effects on other women who watch mainstream porn and how it will take some ground off of the feminist movement in order to improve porn. So all harms, no goods, let's begin. Dear ladies and gentlemen, the first thing that we talked about is that the status quo today is perfectly fine. The small uh, demand for female friendly porn from the um, females interested in porn already is catered by the small supply of female fo friendly porn which they themselves conceded. The same goes with transgender porn which is catered to by uh, uh, the transgender porn industry for those that are interested in such things. That's the same with dominance or sadomaso porn or whatever, you name it. All of the different types of porn exist no matter if they're not as profitable as the regular mainstream porn. The same niche market applies to, you know, left-hand industries where, you know, it's not something mainstream, it's not the, where the money's at, but it still exists and it still caters the need of those interested in that. No, thank you. So there's no real logical contention on their side that, uh, you know, there's a problem within the status quo that women who are interested in such things as female-friendly porn uh, don't have access to it. And that's what we were trying to say and that's what they conceded. So here's one, you know, way, no thank you, how the, the main ground on which the government is standing is already shaken. Now, second thing that they wanted to say, and probably what is more important to their minds, is how their policy would change the whole attitude towards women, but before that. Why do you have quotas for women, women if women can get into the parliament anyways? Well, I would not necessarily say that uh, the quotas are de facto a good thing, you know, and we have women opposing that because they don't want a nanny state of a government that says, you cannot do that, we will help you out. Yeah, we, we, have see, we see problems with that either. So, okay, on men, on, on attitude towards women that is created by the industry. First of all, dear ladies and gentlemen, you have conceded again, and I'm pretty bored on, you know, naming the concessions you've made about how you're not changing porn industry as a whole. What you're doing, rather, is you're not proposing any alternative, you're just broadening the definition of what porn is and you're broadening the porn industry and basically your policy of how to solve social issues is just making porn out of it. Uh, but dear ladies and gentlemen, we see several flaws with that. First of all, dear ladies and gentlemen, is because the small demand for female friendly porn would still persist, the male dominant porn, which is profitable as we see today, would still exist. But secondly, even if, if we assume that Ahmed's argument that male would, males would that men would watch female-friendly porn and then see that, men, uh, that women can't dominate men. If we assume that is true, however, we would still see the main principle that women are for your eyes only and for your pleasure only would still persist. It would not solve the main problem that women is a tool of you know, entertainment of oneself, even if we have friendly, dominant, uh, friendly, female friendly porn which shows that you know, women dominate men, we would still have the same effect in the end, uh, in the end that women are there to entertain you, and that's a problem right here. But moving on there, ladies and gentlemen, to our extension, which I think is crucial in this debate, on how the policy they're suggesting would actually be harmful to women themselves and to the feminist movement. Dear ladies and gentlemen, what we see today is that there are still women who watch porn, which is mainstream. We still have married couples who, you know, do that for their entertainment and for, you know, education or whatever, and who enjoy it. And we take that as for granted because it is happening here because the mainstream industry still has some female viewership. But what would happen if the government put a label, put a stamp on some porn defined by some national pool that you know one type of porn is good for women, it's something that women should watch and all the others are demeaning to women. 
What would happen then that those women that enjoy what they watch right now, that enjoy their ways of life and entertaining themselves, would be seen as traitors to the womenkin, that would be seen as something that you know, promotes a demeaning image of a woman, and so on and so on. And we would see that the society itself would be marginalized, and that's something we don't want. And that's something where we see that you don't believe that women can make decisions, and that women cannot choose for themselves what they want, their ladies and gentlemen. And that's where the national poll also uh, is of particular concern, because if national poll, for example, has an you know, end result of 55% of women choosing, uh, you know, femme fatale kind of porn, then, you know, the 40% of uh, women who would just vote for, uh, you know, BDSM or whatever, would then be marginalized as seen as perverse or whatever. And we don't want that. We don't want the government to say what kind of porn is good to watch, what type of entertainment you should do, and what types of women are right. We want them to choose for themselves, and with niche markets as they are today, we see that need catered. So that's that. And dear ladies and gentlemen, the second thing that we are particularly worried about is the porn industry itself would not benefit at all from the policy. Why is it so? Because right now, when the male, when the male industry, the mainstream porn <coughs> industry is so dominant, the feminist movements, the movements for women rights, etc., etc., they have this uh, argument that there is not really an alternative and women are forced to do that and they are forced to be objects and they're forced to be abused at the workplace, etc., etc. What would happen if we accept the token policy, the red herring policy of yours, of team government, is that there would be an, you know, a vision of alternative, there would be an ideal that there is some sort of alternative and the feminist movement going against the wrongdoings of porn industry would lose ground because the advocates of porn industry would just say, hey, if women's are so women are so abused in the mainstream porn industry, they can just go into the you know, female dominant porn. And that's something we don't want, dear ladies and gentlemen. We want to improve the rights uh, of those porn stars that work there. And we want to do that in a free market society. So for all these reasons, dear ladies and gentlemen, keep the situation as it is and keep women free. Ladies and gentlemen, what the opposition bench does not understand is that porn is not simply one movie. Porn is something more. Porn is what influences people throughout generations, that creates a perception of women that are viewed for a longer than the short term. We believe right now that the government has to take a stance where long-term benefits outweigh short-term uh, possible, uh, possible harms. So going on to this debate and whipping in this deba debate into uh, clash points, does the government have a right to do this action? And second of all, <coughs> and second of all uh, will it affect the status quo in a beneficial way? So going on the first, uh, does the government has a right? Because basically we already told you, and it was explained in Ahmed's speech, that already governments should take a stance, and the government always takes a stance when they see that one group is actually right now uh, but being violated by their rights. Already we see that women are right now are not portrayed the way that they should be. And already we never heard a clear stance from the opposition, because basically the opening opposition agreed with us that uh, they agree that affirmative action in itself is a good thing, but they did not agree that this is the best policy. But the closing opposition somehow tried, tried another policy because they said that they do not agree with affirmative actions as a whole. So we don't see a clear stance from the opposition because basically we see that affirmative action is somehow needed in the current system. We need because we already see that women are violated. Women right now are ported in only one matter. And just because they say there's all oh, there's a small amount of portion of pornography that is ported for women, we see it's simply not enough because this already shows that the problem right now exists and we know we are now need the change in society. Going on because we already told you that the government right now has our government right now puts quotas and has uh, actually uh, 
uh, positive results. We already said when we put you no know, thing when we put quotas for women in parliament. Later on, we don't need to do that because already the perception changes. Meaning that right, the only thing that we need no because the only thing that we need right now is a first step to take. Because basically, we see it's a long term uh, policy we want to take. We want to empower women in pornography because we don't believe that we can allow a uh, male dominant uh, right, right. industry. Uh, no, thank you. It, the industry to allow this policy because basically what they told us that right now the, this was the point of closing opposition that women who right now we cannot violate this because women right now who watch normal porn, normal porn and like it will, will look like traitors in a second. We don't believe it is true, and I will continue under this POI. So if you want to change the situation, you have to make an assumption that males are going to take this philosophical approach to when they're watching. Okay, you probably haven't watched porn, ladies and gentlemen. That's not so, so hard to understand. When we see that a woman is raped, when a woman is, I don't know, being, uh, being hurt in many other ways, we see that already you don't have to have a PhD to understand that she has no rights whatsoever. If we want to change the perception, no, thank you. Because basically the, op the opposition does not understand that you don't have to have quotes, uh, uh, you have, don't have to have the speech uh, in, in, in a porn movie to understand what the message is. So going on to this, uh, this point, also what they told us, uh, women will be traitors that, uh, that who already uh, want the, nor the normal porn and do not support uh, the new uh, uh, female-friendly porn. Because basically what we never understand that why under the status quo, male viewers who watch lesbian porn are not actually viewed as traitors too. Because later on, because this is actually the idea that if male, if male viewers watch lesbian porn, why don't they actually support uh, not their side? I will take next course. That's because the government does not define one porn as good porn and others as not good porn. Okay, we see that it's clear. You clearly don't understand what this debate is about. Because basically we're saying that the porn industry right now needs some regulations. Because right now we see a huge problem. Because we see that if we already, because, the, uh, and this actually leads to my second point about the, about will it be effective. Because basically you say all the time, there is a small amount of, of porn, we already have it, why do we need to change? Because this is basically the problem that we have. Because basically no one wants to, to make more, oh no, because, uh, more, more films uh, because there is no no viewership. Why is there no viewership? We already told you a, m a million times because no one is going to watch if the perception of women doesn't change under the status quo. We see there is no possible way to change the perception. No, if we actually don't have a first step, and why will we be uh, why it will be effective under this policy? So basically, what we heard a lot from from the opposition is that. Uh, two <coughs> scenarios that already for, for in the first scenario that women won't watch because they basically don't like porn because we don't see we don't see as it is, as a good example because already we see that already they, uh, they agree with us that some amount of portion exists no thank you already we see that women are interested the reason that they don't view it because they don't see porn that portrays them in the right way that they like also what they see and even in, in, in actually we took an even if stance because what we and Ahmed actually analyzed was in even if only male viewers, no thank you, because they, they agreed with us. They told us that already women won't watch. The only viewership are the only viewers are male. So actually, this is more even beneficial. If we see that male viewers are going to watch uh, fr female friendly porn, actually the policy is going to be even more beneficial because they will get the message, the clear message in porn that women are not somehow the meaningful object that they can. Uh, they can actually occur in films because that message is going to be clear that the women, uh, uh, the, uh, the woman can actually have s uh, some, uh, some actually uh, s some stance. Also, what they never actually, uh, they never actually uh, elaborated was uh, what is the message, what is the influence of porn? Because we told you, ladies and gentlemen, that porn affects generations. It does not only affect porn stars or porn industry. It also affects the society as in the matter that people view how you have to uh, how you have to have relationship with uh, women, and we believe it is very important this debate, seeing that we need this stance not for not only for porn industry to change, but only for porn stars not to be viewed as prostitutes. We need that that in society for generations we can have normal relationships between a man and a woman that won't be based that a male um, the male partner has to dominate in every say, case scenario because we believe it is. Un 
incorrect that, that, that under the status quo, the government allows the porn industry to abuse women, to allow you, a male domin dominance, and we believe that we should support the motion. So today the proposition bench has conceded, ladies and gentlemen, conceded to one important fact, that there is a small supply, we don't believe it's actually a small supply, but there is a supply of female-friendly porn to meet the demand. So what was their major problem? What did they want to aim to do? They wanted to increase the number of videos, ladies and gentlemen, increase the amount of female-friendly porn that exists. Their point was, that, ladies and gentlemen, that you need to attract more people towards it. But what difference does it really make if there are 50 videos or 100 videos? Because at the end of the day, the same people, the same number of people are going to be clicking the link, ladies and gentlemen, that says female friendly porn, regardless of whether there are 50 videos behind that link or 100 videos behind that link. So they're not really changing anything. And that's the major thing that they have not been able to grasp throughout this debate. That simply increasing the number of videos, ladies and gentlemen, increasing the number of female friendly videos that you can access when you click on that link does not mean that more people will access it, especially not their target audience, which are male, male who are already so into male domination. Thank no, thank you. <laughs> so, before I go into my issues, let's point out two things. Our positive case was effectively dropped by the, by the closing government today. Our entire argument about how, ladies and gentlemen, what you're at, when you impose this policy, the, the, if the, attempts of the, the attempts of the feminist movement to try and bring about change within the mainstream porn industry is reduced because they have less ground to bring about change. And secondly, our argument about how you're marginal, uh, marginal, marginalizing women who like the mainstream porn industry was also just trivialized and was, uh, Engler just said that, well, why do men watch lesbian porn, which is not an appropriate response. No, thank you, sir. Now let's go on to the issues of today. Number one, does the need actually exist? Number two, even if, ladies and gentlemen, no thank you ma'am, even if it exists, does their policy cater to the need? Number three, I'll be talking about how their policy actually causes more harm. And number four, I'll be talking about why the government does not have a right to introduce this policy. And let's talk about the first thing first. Does the need actually exist? And we strongly believe that it does not, ladies and gentlemen. We believe that we have proved to you on the opposition side that this demographic is already catered for by the free market. They said, well, if only 10 to 15% of viewers watch female friendly porn, then the porn industry is not really going to care about them. Then why do you have things such as transgender porn, lesbian porn, uh, bisexual, ladies and gentlemen, uh, gay porn, and at the same time, you also have female-friendly porn. You also have websites, ladies and gentlemen, that provide you with female, no thank you ma'am, female-friendly porn. And this all comes about, no thank you, organically. And that's what we want. We want an organic approach to female-friendly porn, which already happens in the status quo. No thank you. And since they have not been able to prove to you, ladies and gentlemen, that this is not being provided for, no thank you, we win on the point that the need does not exist. Let's go on to the second point. Even if, no thank you sir, even if the need exists, does their policy <coughs> work? Let's talk about the national poll first. Number one, something that was not really addressed by them, we said, what if your national poll proves exactly the opposite of what you want? What if they just assume that the majority of women like sensitive porn? What if 55% of your population of your women do not like sensitive porn? Then their national poll is simply, no thank you sir, counterintuitive. Secondly, we said that the national poll is actually detrimental because women, ladies and gentlemen, who are in the minority will feel that the government does not approve of their sexual preferences and that is a very very dangerous precedent to set. I'll take you. I'll get onto that right now. Their problem ladies and gentlemen was that women are being commodified. But they also went on to say in the next breath that women don't watch mainstream porn because they know they're being commodified. So clearly they're already empowered, ladies and gentlemen, and they're not really changing anything. 
No, thank you, ma'am. Their target audience was the males. So now they think that males who are so into male domination, ladies and gentlemen, are simply going to go and watch female-friendly porn. They provided us no evidence, no link, and no proof as to why males who today in the status quo already have their sexual preferences in place. No, thank you. If they've been watching porn for five years, the same type of porn, why would they suddenly one day, because the government's saying that this is female-friendly porn, why would they go and watch it? We strongly believe that they would not. Third argument, no thank you. How their policy is actually going to cause more harm. And this was, I'm gonna be strengthening our constructive case here. Number one, how it would marginalize and label women. So what happens when you have a national poll and the government says that 55% of your population believes that this porn is correct? So you know what? That kind of porn is correct, ladies and gentlemen. If you do not, if you don't, if you don't watch that porn, then you don't believe in female empowerment. You don't believe in women's rights. Just because a woman likes male domination does not mean that in her real life, ladies and gentlemen, does not mean that in the 23.5 hours she spends away from watching porn, she's not independent. Does not mean she does not go to work. Does not mean that she's dominated by men. No, thank you. We believe, ladies and gentlemen, that they have just exaggerated the problem to a large extent that women are not so vulnerable as they would make them out to be. No, thank you, ma'am. So the government is actually bringing about a detrimental effect when they say to a particular group of women that your sexual preferences are not approved. When they say to a particular group of women that we've decided as a nation that you don't believe in women empowerment and you don't believe in females. Right. Our next problem, we said that, and this was completely not addressed, that you're actually preventing change in the mainstream industry. And this has been their problem from the start. They, they said, ladies and gentlemen, that women are being commodified so we should increase the amount of porn. But they're not changing the fact that the mainstream porn that commodifies women still exists, ladies and gentlemen. But what they, are, what they are doing is that they're reducing the ground for the feminist movement to go ahead and try to bring about effective change in the mainstream porn industry. Because what are, no thank you, I'm protecting it. Because what are people gonna say then? People are gonna say, well you don't need to watch that porn because you have another alternative. So why are you trying to bring about change when we already give you an alternative? But we want change because we actually believe in women's empowerment, not them. Let's go on to the final argument about why we believe the government does not have a right. We don't believe, ladies and gentlemen, we, we, we come out here and we tell you that the porn industry is a private commercial industry. And as we, we said that we might not necessarily believe in quotas, but we also establish we also establish how affirmative action is very different from the porn industry, which was something that you just, that uh, Proposition Bench chose to completely ignore. We believe, ladies and gentlemen, that the government does not have a right to interfere in something so personal as your sexual preferences. And that's exactly what they're doing in this case, when they're saying that some sexual preferences are approved and some are not. So because of all that, and I've lost my voice, just vote for us.